Before Yo Gotti became the king of Memphis, growing a dedicated following with his cocaine music mixtapes and blowing up with tracks like Rake It Up, Five Star Champions, Juice, and Down in the DM. Before Yo Gotti would beef with fellow artists OG Boo Dirty and Young Dolph and collaborate with the likes of Gucci Mane, Lil Wayne, T.I., Kanye West, Young Thug, Kodak Black, Mike Will Made It, and Nicki Minaj. Before releasing a grand total of nine studio albums and 22 mixtapes. Who been consistent but not being touched? It's a big difference. Yo Gotti grew up in a rough neighborhood of North Memphis where his entire family made a living hustling. He saw both his brother and his father spend time in prison, but that wouldn't deter him from getting in on the family business. Thankfully, he switched from the drug game to the rap game, and with his relentless work ethic, he worked his way up to becoming one of the biggest names in hip hop and the undisputed king of Memphis. Well, Undisputed, at least until Young Dolph entered the picture. What's going on, guys? My name is Michael McCredden, documenting the life and career of Yo Gotti prior to fame, here for you all before they're famous. I've also done videos on artists like Gucci Mane and Young Dolph, so you might want to go and check those out. But as always, let me know who you want me to document next in the comments down below. Also, you can find me on Instagram or Twitter at McCreddenM. I was born in this shit. Like, I really felt like I wanted the best to do it. Yo Gotti was born Mario Mims on May 19th, 1981 in Memphis, Tennessee. He grew up in the infamous Ridgecrest Apartments in the Fraser neighborhood of North Memphis. His was a family of hustlers. His mom, Geraldine, aka Jerry, was in the streets stealing and selling drugs. Both his father and older brother, Anthony, aka Juke, were hustlers too and spent time locked up. Young Mario also spent a great deal of time with his aunts who were in the streets as well. While his family did their best to give Mario a happy childhood, there were all Always signs pointing to how mom and dad put food on the table. If I open the deep freezer to get a popsicle, it stacks some money in the deep freezer. If they drop me off over my auntie house to play with my cousin, it stacks some money in they shit. Sure enough, young Mario would get involved in the family business himself. He stated, being from the hood, things like hustling will come your way. Thankfully, his hustle would soon enter the rap game, but Yo Gotti credits a lot of his success in the music industry to his street hustling days. When you really come from that life like myself, he said, I think the value in it is huge and you value things differently than an average industry person would. Young Mario listened to local Memphis artists like 8Ball and MGAG, Kingpin Skinny Pimp, Gangsta Black, Al Capone, and 3-6 Mafia, all of whom would become serious artistic influences. He also would recently take a liking to Big Crit, Big Sean and Wiz Khalifa, but it wasn't the music that drew young Mario to rap, as he explained. I remember the first time I seen Skinny Pimp in a drop top 5.0, that was the first time I seen an artist with my own eyes that it looked like he had money. It made me say, ah uh, yeah, I'm gonna be a rapper. At the age of 14, he started rapping himself and donned the name Lil Yo. In 1996, he would drop his debut project, a mixtape called Youngsters on a Come Up with the indie label Crime Lords Records and Gibby Some Productions. An underground rap group with associations with 3-6 Mafia led by producers Kingpin, Skinny Pimp and Big Hill. Lil Yo placed the mixtape on consignment at local mom and pop record shops and sold it out of the trunk of a car. Two years later, he'd team up with DJ Sound to create Ridgecrest Kill Us. That one sold so well that a local distributor, Select O Hits, offered him a deal which helped to double his fan base with the 2000 release of From the Dope Game 2 to Rap Game. This would be his first release under the name Yo Gotti. In 2001, Yo Gotti released Self Explanatory and was featured on the cover of Burder Dog magazine. Then, with TVT Records, Yo Gotti dropped Life in 2003 and in 2006, Back to the Basics. Life would chart the US R&B and hip hop chart peaking at number 59, back to the basics hit number 6 on that chart, number 3 on the US rap chart and 84 on the Billboard 200. That album featured songs like I Got Them with Lil Wayne and Birdman and Gangsta Party with 8Ball and Bun B which was Gotti's first single to chart Billboard. While his studio albums were beginning to pop nationally, attracting the attention of major record labels like RCA and Epic Records, in 2006 Yo Gotti also began producing a series of mixtapes which drew in his most 
dedicated to fans. In fact, it would be another six years until he would release his next studio album. The Full Time Hustlin' mixtape dropped in 2006, as did his DJ drama collaboration, I Told You So. In 2008, he teamed up with Gucci Mane to make Definition of a G. Most notably that year, he released Cocaine Music, the first of what would become a long series of Cocaine Music mixtapes throughout the years. But Yo Gotti's come up didn't happen without his fair share of controversies. He got into a fight with up and coming rapper OG Boo Dirty in a nightclub, which turned seriously violent. Six people got shot. Yeah. Okay. Well, the incident was widely reported as a rap beef that got out of hand. OG Boo Dirty sees it differently. It was really never about me and him, it was about his entourage and my entourage. Okay. Well, that beef was never officially settled, both artists have pretty much allowed it to fizzle out gradually. While it wouldn't be until 2012 that he would have his next major release, he dropped a number of hot singles in 2009, including Sold Out, Woman Lie, Men Lie, featuring Lil Wayne, and Five Star. A promotional single which was certified gold by RIAA. In 2011, he dropped two more singles, Single and We Can Get It On. Both would be featured on his 2012 debut major label release, Live From The Kitchen. The album would peak at number 12 on the Billboard Hot 200 and number 4 on both the US R&B and Hip Hop chart and the US Rap chart. Shortly after the release of this album, Yo Gotti would officially establish his own label, CMG. Initially, the label was known as Cocaine Music Group, named after his mixtapes, but in later years, he made the name a little more family friendly, rebranding as Collective Music Group. In 2013, Yo Gotti announced that he and CMG had signed a distribution deal with Epic Records and with them released the next studio album, I Am. This project would be his highest charting yet, hitting number 7 on the Billboard Hot 200, number 2 on the R&B charts, and number 2 on the rap charts. I Am would include tracks like Cold Blood featuring J. Cole and Kanai Finch, King Shit featuring T.I., Also I Know featuring Rich Homie Kwan and Act Right featuring Jeezy and YG. The next year Gotti would make even more high profile friends featuring on tracks by artists like Big Crit, K Camp, Pusha T, YG and 50 Cent. With his label he would also release a collective project featuring the whole CMG roster called Chapter 1. Loyalty to me, that's life. Loyalty is everything. I'm picking loyalty over the bag. I'm picking loyalty over anything. In 2015, he would release the single Rihanna featuring Young Thug, as well as his most popular hit yet at the time of this recording. Moon in the DM would be certified double platinum, hit number two on the Billboard US rap chart, and number 13 on the Hot 100. The music video for the song has since racked up a massive 120 million views on YouTube. The song would also be the debut single for his 2016 album, The Art of the Hustle. This was his most commercially successful project to date. Date, peaking at number 4 on the pop charts and number 1 on both the US R&B and Hip Hop chart and the US Rap charts. Also in 2016, Yo Gotti would team up with Kanye West, Gucci Mane, Big Sean, 2 Chainz, Travis Scott, Quavo and Designer for the track Champions. And most of these artists, they would reconnect for Castro, released in the same year. While Yo Gotti was collaborating with some of the biggest names in the business, one of them would not be Young Dolph. Their beef would come to a head beginning in 2016, but originally started a couple years prior. Following the release of his mixtape, High Class Street Music 4, Young Dolph appeared on Sway in the Morning. During the interview, he mentioned why he didn't want to sign a record deal with CMG. In February of 2016, he referenced Yo Gotti's failed attempt to sign him once again, this time mocking him via Twitter. He tweeted, Bro went from being my number one fan and wanting to sign me to being my biggest hater. Hashtag facts. Although he didn't mention Gotti by name, it was pretty clear who he was talking about. Another subliminal attack came in the form of the title of his debut album, King of Memphis, a title Yo Gotti had already claimed for himself. One of Yo Gotti's loyal associates, Black Youngsta, decided to strike back posting a clip to Instagram in which he said, Dolph, you a bitch, you a soft ass dude. If you got a problem, say you got a problem. You ain't even no king of Memphis. He ain't from the city, bitch. He captioned the post, when I see that dude, young Dolph, I'ma smack the shit out of him all my life. Black youngster would even go so far as to show up in young Dolph's hood with a few armed guards. While many saw Black Youngsta's actions as being taken on behalf of Yo Gotti, the elder rapper had already seen feuds turn deadly and was far more cautious in public. In an interview with Tim Westwood, he made his perspective clear. My advice, you know I don't move like that, I'm gonna always tell not only him but any youngin, don't handle your business like that. That wasn't enough to kill the beef as it 
wasn't long before Young Dolph would be posting insults to both Yo Gotti and Black Youngster on Instagram. Black Youngster would respond with a diss track, Shake Some, but then by September he would declare the beef is squashed. And it was at least until February of 2017 when Young Dolph dropped the track, Play With Yo Bitch. Still unwilling to get into an open beef with Dolph, Gotti responded with some pretty subtle comments via Twitter. A business partners with LA Reid and Jay Z, hashtag CM9. Blah, blah, blah. Hashtag CM9 in stores on iTunes now. This wasn't enough to stop Dolph, so eventually Gotti decided to drop a diss track of his own, appropriately titled Don't Beef With Me. The beef would continue to escalate throughout March of 2017, then in September, Young Dolph became the victim of a shooting in Hollywood, and hours later, TMZ reported that the LAPD named Yo Gotti, well, he was named as a person of interest. However, after XXL reached out to the LAPD, they clarified that those reports were unfounded. The LAPD would later announced that an associate of Yogati, Corey McClendon, was arrested the day of the shooting and held on a million dollars bail. And we're still looking for two other men who may have had something to do with the shooting. Eventually, Corey would be released without charges, and since then, no new arrests have been made in connection with the shooting of Young Dolph. Since then, Yogati has pretty much gone back to his initial perspective that he doesn't want a beef with Dolph. I don't got no issue. Yeah, yeah. I ain't got no issue. Like, it probably what the Second or third time I've been up here and said the same thing. With his beef with Young Dolph officially over by October of 2017, Yo Gotti released his next studio album, I Still Am. The project would include tracks like Juice and the Platinum Certified Rake It Up with Mike Will Wade It and Nicki Minaj. As for the rest of the story, well, we'll have to wait and see because this is before they're famous. My name is Mike McCrudden. Thanks for checking out this video. You guys have been requesting this one for over a year, so we're finally getting it done. Let me know who you want me to document next in a future video by hitting me up in the comments down below. Or find me on Instagram or Twitter at McCrudnep. I'll see you guys in another video. This has got to be a magic trick. Because there's no way I'm trying to see like it was blowed up. A balloon. She swallowed the shit. And then poured it out of her.